This is the Chinese pronunciation of the name. This is the Chinese. 文杰，文杰，一，文杰，文杰，文杰。How to pronounce 一文杰？ We have Ye Wenjie. Ye Wenjie. Ye Wenjie. Ye. All right, guys, welcome back.、Uh, today we're going to be looking at the three body problem by Sishin Liu. Um, before I continue, for any mispronunciations I give on this book, please、uh, bear with me. Okay,、um, difficult language to get a handle on, and、uh, I'll be doing my best. Also, I'm going to be dividing this review into spoiler-free and spoiler portions. I think it's also important to mention where I come from in terms of my tastes in this book. I find that the more heavily a book leans into a genre, the more die-hard those fans tend to be of the genre, and the stronger the opinions tend to be in the genre. So I. I'm a reader who likes to cast a wide net. I don't really sink heavily into any given genre.、Um, I tend to get bored with a specific style if I spend too much time with it. But it means that I have sampled a wide range of literature. I mean, currently I'm in the middle of reading 1001 Nights, aka Arabian Nights, which has stories I think dating back. I think the earliest stories are from the ninth century. I like everything from Dostoevsky to John Green to Neil Gaiman to、uh, pretty much anything, as long as it's a good story and it can get me involved in something that lets me chew on it for a little while.、It、allows me to feel something, allows me to invest in something. But if you can make me think about something and let that linger in my mind for a long time, not just through the characters and the plot. Devices, but kind of through the themes that it touches on. That's really, really what gets me about a book. And to be honest with you, this is something that sci-fi does fairly well. But to understand my particular taste in science fiction, you'll probably have to look at something that I think hard sci-fi fans will scoff at a little bit, and that would be. The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury, and the reason why I like The Martian Chronicles is because it touches so much on the human aspect. It does a poor job at explaining the technicalities of the science, but does an excellent job at the implications of what that means for humanity and and kind of the human condition. And I think that's one of the strengths of literature. Ray Bradbury also has the benefit of just infusing. His love for life and literature into everything he writes, but that's what I like. I mean, I also loved Heinlein's *Stranger in a Strange Land*.、Uh, you know, the, what does it mean for us? What do these interesting conditions do to us as human beings? I like a little bit more of a psychological bent. So, if there's a technical aspect, if that has no influence on people and and how we behave and implications for what it means to be a person, that kind of just Falls away for me. It, it doesn't really get any purchase in terms of of things that I'm interested in. So keep that in mind when we dive into Three Body Problem. Speaking of Three Body Problem, it does both. Technically, the way he weaves certain ideas through this,、um, from kind of like I guess an engineering perspective and and some math problems. Is incredibly impressive because he does it in a way that's super engaging, but it's also wrapped up in cultural relevance and the trappings of of how our society and how everything can impose upon us and how that can kind of guide our thinking and our behavior towards things that interplay with the technical side of it. So it's not like you have one side where it's just like. You know, this is a diatribe on human nature and what what people are and and our behavior, and then you have this technical stuff over here. They're interwoven, and one part of the plot and the story doesn't work without the other one, or at least it doesn't work nearly as well. And I think this dance between the technical aspect and kind of maybe quote unquote the literary aspect that Sishin Liu is able to do is masterful, and it's something I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed. Another thing that I really enjoyed about this book, and I really got this from. When I started reading some of Ken Liu's short stories, and Ken Liu is actually the translator for both、uh, the first and the third book in the series, is I really like stories that can give me a little bit of a window into the culture that I'm reading, especially when that culture is outside of North America, and not do so in, su in such a dry academic sense, but more in something that can string you along. Um, and and have you involved in what it's what it's like to be there? And I think that's another big strength of fiction that a lot of people don't talk about, is that 
Uh, nonfiction readers will often talk about fiction in terms of they're not learning anything from it, but you can both learn and feel what it's like to be in that place at that time. And that is a much stronger connection for me personally um, than simply reading the facts about whatever happened there. So if you dive into this book, one of the things that I've seen talked about is that the characters are a little bit cold. Um, not that they're not fleshed out, but the characters tend to be a little bit forward and not they don't ruminate a ton on their on their own feelings. They kind of move on from whatever is happening into the next thing. And I think if you need somebody to really be heavily introspective in a particular way, you might not get that with these characters. As long as you don't make the criticism that people would, this isn't how people would act, right? Uh, if somebody were to have a certain experience that you might find in this book um, and you would be like, oh, I've been through that. That's not how somebody would behave. I, I can't stand this mentality because it assumes that out of the 7 billion people on the planet, everybody is kind of homogenous and acts the exact same. Uh, I think there's a lot to be said for the universality of human needs and desires, but there's also outside of that narrow window, there are multitudes of ways that the human condition can manifest itself, particularly when those cultures are vastly different from ones that we grew up in. And I find that I get a lot of that from this book. And instead of it detracting from the enjoyment of the book, I find it actually immersed me more because I want to understand what it's like to have this perspective. And I find that that perspective informs my reading of the characters, of the culture, and allows me to have a basis of comparison when I go into other literature written in the same area. So since I've read Ken Liu's Paper Menagerie and other stories, I can now compare that to Sishin Liu's Three Body Problem and see how some of those sentiments compare because of course, um, in a country of over a billion people, just because you have six, seven characters in this uh, book that behave a certain way during a certain timeline, that doesn't also mean that everybody in the country is going to have the same sentiment. So just go into this book knowing that you're going to get good characterization, but you're not you might not get the kind of attitudes from the character that you might expect from maybe a more Western approach to, to certain characterization in fiction. Now, none of this is to say that beautiful moments don't come through. Very, very poignant aspects of the book and the story come through, uh, particularly in select chapters, and they really, really hit home for me, and I'm gonna get into those a little bit more in the spoiler section. I think that this is a book that demands a particular level of curiosity from the reader, okay? It's, it's quite technically demanding, but it's not technically demanding in a way that I think is over people's head. Um, I have a little bit of a science background that's more in the life sciences than in the uh, physical sciences. And this book it tends to be more of a physics engineering kind of science approach. However, that didn't take away from my understanding of it. I'm currently reading another book uh, called Foucault's Pendulum. And when I read that book, I, I think I'm, I'm not educated enough to write or read this book in a way that can be fully appreciated. Um, it's very historically dense. Um, I'm not a historian. My education was definitely stronger in the sciences than it was in history. That doesn't mean that I can't read and enjoy it, but somebody who had a lot more in-depth understanding of history over the past 2000 years is going to uh, get a lot more enjoy enjoyment out of it. That book is also a lot uh, written at a higher reading level. It's a little bit harder to enjoy. With Three Body Problem, it's written very plainly. Um, and I like that kind of stoic, direct delivery. I think it meshes well and adds a good juxtaposition when you're reading something that's technically difficult because you don't have to also burden yourself with overly technical language. The language is plain, which allows your brain to free up some resources to deal with some of the technical aspects. And the technical aspects aren't thrown at you with like term after term after term. It's slowly unraveled in the way that Sishin Liu has kind of developed the plot and add certain plot mechanics into it so that you can kind of be strung along to understand it a little bit more. And there might be certain technical aspects of some of the questions that, that are brought up that might go over your head a little bit. Some of them went over my head a little bit as well. But in terms of that, it's not something that you can be like, oh, I'm not gonna understand the next section of this book because I didn't understand this specific thing that they were talking about. You just go, oh, that's that's just an aspect of the system that they're, that they're trying to explain. And then you just kind of put that in the back of your mind going forward. Um, again, anything that I may or may not have tripped up over this book from the technical aspect, I don't think detracts from the overall enjoyment of Three Body Problem. There are some parts of this that you might find a little bit slow, um, depending on how, how you follow along and how much enjoyment you're getting out of it. I found it 
especially when they're unraveling aspects of this isn't going to be really a spoiler because without context it doesn't make any sense but the whole chaotic versus stable era thing when that first starts happening um, I could see how people are like, okay, why are we here? What are we doing here? But I think the the time he takes to unravel that really adds to both being able to understand it, but also the intrigue. My favorite thing about this book is really what it accomplishes. The fact that it, it is able to, it hits, it, it starts right off with a bang. Okay, there's a very strong cultural relevance that is not sci-fi related at all. And that gives you both a tone for the book it gives you motivation for the character, strong motivation right up front. It hits you because it's a very impactful scene. It really swept me up into the story right away. And there were a few slight lulls later on, but none of it was so burdensome that I lost that initial hook that took me into the story. And balancing that cultural relevance with the technical aspects of this book is superb. Like I can't I can't praise Sishin uh, Lu well or highly enough for what he does in this book because I've been reading a lot about this subject matter um, and about the 20th century political aspects in general um, over the, the last couple years and having him be able to weave that through in a science fiction narrative is is exquisite i really really think he did an excellent job in so doing he gives you history he gives you culture he gives you character motive uh, motivation he gives you technical uh, technical ramifications and he wraps all of that up into a cohesive story in under 400 pages not only impressive but i would argue probably so far my favorite read this year and it might be tied for my favorite science fiction book um, next to martian chronicles again because martian chronicles although far less scientifically accurate and far less technical they both have such a strong connection between the society social aspect individual psychology inside that social aspect and how this introduction of a new science fiction element can affect it and i think that's the biggest strength of science fiction it's the what if but not just the what if so we can have fun within a technical playground um, maybe something more like the martian by andy weir but what if and its implications on humanity that's what gives it the literary quality that allows it to stick with me and that's what i particularly enjoy as a reader because it leaves me thinking about the book long after i'm done so if you want impressive literary elements with a with a sparse style that also has poignant moments great technical aspects all this stuff wrapped up into one i mean you really can't go wrong with with three body problem time for the spoilers in the beginning we have this big cultural revolution that's happening and the main character uh that starts off the book yi wenjie i think i'm trying it's it's very hard her her family becomes the victim of this cultural revolution and that really informs her for the rest of the book so the cultural revolution in china was basically a purge to preserve uh the communist thought at the time the process of doing this involved uh i mean overthrowing landlords um eliminating any kind of what they would refer to as revisionist thought um, making sure that everything was in line with the communist ideology of maoist china at the time um, it was very violent, it was very uh, cruel, and it, it was incredibly dogmatic. It's actually quite horrendous to read about. So basically, she watches her father, who is a physicist, uh, become victim of this cultural revolution. I want to explain how you can read that scene for yourself. Um, and this kind of informs you of how this character is going to behave throughout the rest of the book. I found this incredibly powerful and, and particularly important because the cultural revolution and what these characters see in humanity is a common theme in the book and it informs their decision of how to deal with how they want to deal with the alien invasion, okay? After that, uh, some stuff happens there and then we kind of switch characters. So we, we, we alternate between main characters a little bit and we follow a guy named Wang Miao and he is a nanotechnologist and he starts to see these weird flashes of countdowns to something that's going to happen and he ends up being swept up in this organization that is aware of what's going to happen and again this is an alien invasion book that's not a big surprise I'm pretty sure it's on the back jacket copy it's in the description of the story and he, he wonders why he's he's involved and he gets sucked into this kind of general I don't want to say conspiracy but it's it, it's several groups of people who are aware of what's going to happen and they either want it to happen or they don't and surprisingly one of the ways that he discovers this is through this VR simulation 
called the three body problem. Throughout playing this game, um, this game ends up basically being a tryout for people who would be interested in solving the three body problem or understanding the nature of the three body problem because the three body problem directly affects the alien civilization. The three body problem is an impossible mathematical model to solve and it, it, it will eventually subsume this planet and, and completely destroy it. So they have to leave and they happen to make contact with Earth. This entire book essentially unfolds from somebody who ends up becoming a product of the cultural revolution and uses their technical know-how to make contact with an alien civilization and the ramifications of either stopping or facilitating the arrival of that, that alien civilization. That is a very broad brushstroke and it is unfolded in a way that is very hard to anticipate because I found that the way that this, this book unfolded it wasn't like, oh, they're coming. Oh no, they're not coming. Uh, you know, how do we fight this side or that side? The way it's unraveled is kind of the joy of reading the book. And the questions therein and the motivations that unfold between the characters, society, and the aliens themselves um, is a real treat. And the joy of it is how he's able to pepper in these various uh, quandaries, these little mathematical problems. The way he solves uh, certain issues that aliens might have coming to Earth how you uh, two protons that's all i'm gonna say two protons i don't think i've ever read anybody take two protons talk about various dimensions and work with those two conditions to write so many chapters on technical applications of using two protons to have such a consequence on an entire planet um, and if you're curious like Protons are insignificantly small. How can how can that happen? It's a very good question, and it's a question that uh, Sishin Liu addresses in the book. Um, same with how he gives context to the three-body problem, the way he's able to creatively implicate these various aspects of physics and mathematics into a story without having it a slog. Um, fantastic. This book really asks the question, can humans be trusted with Earth? And if not, then who can? And should we allow those people to come and take stewardship of the earth? And should we allow them to uh, take humans with them? Or should we, you know, try to convince them that humans are worth saving, but we must be reformed ourselves? Maybe humans have to undergo their own cultural revolution as a planet under the, under the whim of these alien invaders. So one of the most powerful things that I, I found in the book is I, I love it when an author can take a particular viewpoint that a character has and then address that viewpoint later on in the book and throw it back in that character's face. So one of the things that Ye went through um, in the beginning, she confronted the, uh, how do I put this without ruining it? She confronted some of the people that were committing the crimes against her family in the first chapter of the book. And she was looking for some closure, closure from those people. But the people who were victimizing her family, they had their own consequences. They were ostracized in their own right and their lives were ruined in their own way. And they kind of confront her again later on and they say, who are you to ask for closure? You have no idea how we've succumbed to our own victimhood in the wake of this revolution. And this brings it into a larger issue that when you have these revolutions or when you have these movements, there's often fragmentation within the movement that has disagreements on how that movement should move forward. So not only does the author weave that through into the actual aspect of the cultural revolution itself and brings that to light, but he also infuses that into the factions that are trying to welcome the alien invaders. Should, should we welcome these people to completely take over the earth because humans can't be trusted as stewards of this planet? Um, or are we worth saving? Um, and I believe that it actually breaks down into more factions on top of that. And this disagreement creates uh, a rift within these movements that um, adds another layer of complexity to the story. One of the things that struck me with this is I have uh, some experience with antinatalists, which are people who uh, think that having children is uh, morally reprehensible um, because humans can't be trusted uh, and humans are the scum of the earth. Uh, antinatalists are almost entirely misanthropic. And one of these was a friend of mine who would constantly barrage me with all the evidence to support his claim um, until our relationship uh, as friends pretty much broke apart. Um, having that experience with these people, and they're not as few and far between as you would think, really 
allowed me to connect with the people in this book because the, the problem is is that this mentality is very easy to adopt if you look at all the horrendous things that humans so willfully do to the planet and to one another but the way that that Sishin Lu addresses it isn't as like a moral teaching tool i think one of the mindsets of the region is is creating a harmony with nature and humans are especially within the last hundred years very good at disrupting that harmony and i think that is a major implication and theme uh, both culturally and universally that plays very strongly in three body problem just the fact that humans can't be trusted and how do we deal with that right are are these alien invaders going to be the saviors for the human race are they going to be the end of the human race um, for some it really doesn't matter because as long as they can take over the planet uh, they're going to do a better job than we ever did and there's no human hope in seeing where where people can go from here uh, we simply can't be trusted that that really gets me excited for the second and third book because i want to see the implications and whether or not the uh, the human race really has sufficient redemptive qualities or what the consequences of the aliens coming are and how that plays out no matter what there's going to be some sort of moral conclusion to the book whether the author intends it or not and that's something i'm really much uh hooked on to and again this is why i'm so much of a thematic reader because these are the ideas that keep me going yes the story is strong yes the characters are strong yes it's masterfully woven together but the themes are something that really pulls me forward because i i want to know what conclusion that comes to so yeah i rambled way more about this book than I usually do about other books, but there is so much in this book and under 400 pages. Like it is a genuinely impressive book. And if you're gonna dig into some sci-fi, if you want a reader that is not from North America, that is gonna give you a little bit of a different window that can tie both cultural relevance with human psychology and a technical aspect to science fiction. I mean, what more can you want out of a book? Um, seriously impressive. I highly recommend The Three Body Problem by Sishin Liu. Um, if you've read this book, please let me know what you think about it. Uh, and if you've read the sequels without spoiling it, let me know how it goes. Um, I've heard that the Dark Forest and uh, Death's End are even better than Three Body Problems. So I'm really excited to dig into those. I have a few books, uh, a few series that I need to wrap up before I get to those. But uh, those are definitely on my TBR uh, within the next few months. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Oh,